another very special episode of The Cider Drinker, because as you can see, we are at the Colchester Winter Beer and Ale Festival. And uh, my God, it's bloody cold outside, but we are indoors, thankfully, and we are doing, well, what else? A cider review. Today, we have got Buffoon's Rib Cracker to begin the night off with. I believe this was 6.3%, and it comes in at £1.70 for this half pint. So, I've got uh, Stephen, the old uh, filmmaker, behind me with the camera. Say hi. Hello. There we go. Now then, let's uh, go and get a whiff, shall we? Now, that is very nice, actually. It's got um, nice, it's, it's almost like a medium sweet cider. It's got uh, very sweet floral tones um, on the nose. But, yeah, it doesn't actually smell as strong as 6.3%, but will it be the taste? Let's find out. Cheers, guys. Here's to the uh, first cider of the camera Winter Ale Festival. So making make love to the camera even as I'm speaking. Um, yeah, this is a, this is a very very sweet cider. Yeah, I'd even say this is actually sweet, not just medium sweet. Very. Um, there you go. And as you can see, it's um, nice, lightly golden in colour as well. Some would say pissy, but I don't think so. Kind of um, cloudy as well. That's cool. But yeah, the taste is really really sweet. You've got. Um, I'll go again. Second opinion. tangy initial taste and then um, throughout you get this really really nice oaky undertone all throughout and uh, it finishes off with a very sweet but also very oaky aftertaste too. So really it kind of marries all like the different um, types of sizes together. You've got your sweet, you've got your dry, but you've also got your vintage and your oaky characteristics as well. So really if you like any type of ciders this one is right up your alley. So I'll actually go and give Buffoon's Rib Cracker a very very solid 8 out of 10 to begin the night off with. Very promising start, but will it carry on? We'll find out soon. Well, 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 here we go. We've got another cider here, and it is Carter's original dry cider that we have here. Let's take a look at the old colour, if I get the old uh, logo out of the way. Do, 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 do. There we go. It's um, actually slightly lighter in colour than um, the last Buffoon's Rib Cracker that I had. Almost colour looks like a lime cordial, wouldn't you say? Again, uh, slightly cloudy, but obviously uh, still cider. No sparkling shit here, I can tell you that. But overall, that looks really nice. It comes in at 6.7%, and it's also £1.70 for this half pint as well. Well, actually, the guy gave me more than half a pint, so uh, thumbs up to him. Let's go and get a whiff. It's, uh, it's um, a dry side that you can definitely tell it is dry. It's um, well, actually really, really overpowering with the dry notes. Um, well, let's dive in, shall we? Cheers, guys. It would even um, it would even uh, be considered like a lime cordial almost like it's uh, very very tangy very very astringent as well especially um, on the initial taste you've got um, almost like a sort of vinegary sharpness to it right at the start but it leaves you with a really nice dry finish as well and yet strangely enough there is like a slight undertone of citrus like almost like a lemon or a lime flavour to it so uh, let's just get a second one to be sure. Zoom in there, cameraman. God, yeah, this is insanely dry. I'll tell you what, it's even drier, I'd say, than the Henry Weston's extra dry that I had all those reviews back. And that was bloody dry. So what I'll say is, um, it's probably the quiet taste, this one. It's not going to be for everyone because it is just that dry. But if you do like those sorts of ciders, this one is going to be right up the alley. So I'm going to go and give Carter's original dry cider a 7 out of 10. Another very nice tasting cider, so here's hoping that trend continues. Peace out, homies. Okay, we are joined here by special guest Stephen, my little cameraman for the night. How are you doing? I'm good, thanks. Okay, so might I just ask, what drink you actually have here? Here we have a half of the squirrel's nuts. Squirrel's nuts, eh? That's right. So, um... Not the squirrel's nuts, sack. The squirrel's nuts. Just the squirrel's nuts, yeah. I see. So, um, do you know which company, um, makes this particular beverage? B, B, 
Beeston, something like that. Uh, Beeston, Beeston Squirrels Nuts. Yeah. Do you know what? That's kind of appropriate, actually. So, um, why did you go for this particular one? In you know, it had an amusing name. Naturally, that's why I went for the uh, buffoon's rib cracker. But uh, can you tell us a little about a little bit about this uh, beverage? Uh, it's brown. It's got a foamy bit on the top. Um, you can do, or you can just use uh, layman's terms. It smells like eggs. It smells like eggs? Yeah, a little, a little bit. I'm going to dive in. It's light, it's not heavy. why it's called uh well I, I don't know maybe it's not really acorns I, I wouldn't really know although it has got sort of a chestnutty sort of color as well so um oh, you, you've got all the you've got all the moves haven't you <laughs> i try to anyway <laughs> now the question is would you recommend this to anyone else that is looking for a particular um ale at this festival well this is following up a, a half of uh pulp fiction which was an orange based stout which was a lot stronger tasting so this seems quite weak tasty in comparison. What is the uh, ABV? Just asking. I have no idea. Okay, we'll leave it at that. So, um, out of a mark of ten, what would you give Squirrels Nuts? Um, hang on, let me get this fourth or fifth opinion. Or rather a final taste before the final verdict. 6.6? <laughs> 6. You okay. always have to bloody decimalise it, don't you? Oh yeah! Thanks for that. Anyway, thank you very much Stephen and enjoy your squirrel's nuts. You're very welcome. Alright guys, we are back with another cider, would you believe it? This time we're going to the uh, Delvin's End Cider Company and we've got their Winter Spice Cider. Let's go and take a look at the colour, shall we? Um, again, it looks pretty much like all the other ciders that we've had. It's uh, lightly golden in colour, slightly cloudy, very um, still, no carbon obviously, but um, I'd say a little bit darker than the other two that we've had, but yeah, pretty much the same colour, so I'm just going to have to go and dive right in. I'll be honest with you, I'm not actually getting much off the nose, so um, I'm actually going to have to go and dive right in, so cheers guys. Oh, sorry, I do apologise, I didn't tell you, this was 7% and it came in at £1.70 for this half pint, again. I think they're all £1.70, so I'm actually going to stop saying that, so let's dive right in. Cheers, guys. Do you know what that instantly reminds me of? Remember a couple of reviews back, I did that homebrew from uh, my mate Colin, uh, the Widowmaker, and he used molasses in it? It tastes exactly like that. I reckon because it's a winter spice cider, they've actually added uh, molasses into this, and this is giving this, again, a sort of, uh, yeah, again, a Christmas pudding sort of taste. Obviously molasses gives it that sort of thing, it's, you know, you're getting, um, again, hits of rum, you're getting hits of raisins, currants, sultanas, you're getting, um, like, slight like citrusy notes as well, and you're getting like uh, a little bit of lemon, a little bit of orange, and um, well, let's just get a second bit. Yeah, it's really fruity, quite light actually, um, not as full bodied as um, the Widowmaker that I had, so it's a, a, lighter, a lighter drink to have. So it's actually a danger cider because it's very easy to drink, but it is 7%, so you've got to watch out for this bad boy because it is very, very strong. Um, I will say it is going to be another required taste because obviously not everyone likes the taste of molasses, so this one is um, definitely not for everyone out here. But for me, I don't mind these sorts of ciders. You know, it's different, it's unique, you know, and uh, it, you know, if you want to broaden your horizons to different tasting ciders, then uh, this is one to go for because um, it doesn't taste as strong as uh, the homebrew that I had. So yeah, this is kind of a more of a starter cider if you're going to be a more winter-based cider. But I will actually go and give Delvin's End of Winter Spice Cider a 6 out of 10. It doesn't score any high because, as I say, it isn't a quiet taste, but if you uh, do, as I say, want to try different ones, give this one a go. See you on the next cider, or Perry, or Pider. Who knows? And there's my finger. Ha <laughs> ha! Stephen's fingering is fun, yeah. because guess what? He's having a little bit of hog roast. 
Let's start right then. Go on. Go on. Do it. Fantastic to me. That's not how it's done. No. <laughs> See that? I've got one too. Ah. Mm. 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 Fantastic. Alright, then, ladies and gentlemen, we've got another cider for you guys. Sorry, that's a little bit serious there. I'll be back to my normal self now. And we've got another Mill White cider. I do you know what? I think I've actually had most of their ciders now, but uh, this is one that I've never seen before. And I've gone for it because it's kind of a lower ABV and I want to save myself for the big boys coming up. What's this face? But yes, this is Hedge Layer and it comes in at 4.8% in volume and it actually cost me £1.60, so it was uh, 10p cheaper than the other ciders that I've had. But um, as you can see, it's pretty much like every other cider I've had. Pretty golden colour, very cloudy, as you can see, almost like a scrumpy cider in, um, in looks and everything. But again, um, still, so uh, yeah, we've got a nice old real cider here again. So apparently it's a dry cider, but will it be dry at the smell? Let's get a whiff. Oh yeah, that's uh, that's really that's really dry. Um, it reminds me. I think they must have added something like um, Somerset Red Streak or uh, a Davenet Apple to this because it has got a really nice dry, almost like an oaky sort of um, note to it. So uh, if you like those apples, this might be the cider for you. We'll find out though as I go in for the taste. Cheers, guys, and here's to um. Well, Another Bill White cider. That wasn't what I was expecting. I was ex expecting it to be a lot drier than that. But um, I mean, it says medium dry on the poster, but I'd actually say this is more like a medium sweet cider. I mean, you've got a really nice, um, like a dry apple taste in the initial taste. Again, like like a Davenant or a Somerset Red Street. But then you're left with this really nice sweet aftertaste to it, almost like a, like a Granny Smith or something like that. A really nice uh, sweet apple aroma. But all throughout, there's a really nice, um, again, another fruity floral aroma all throughout the taste. Let's just get a uh, second opinion to get the uh, aftertaste. getting on the aftertaste, you are getting um, ripe oranges, like really ripe, juicy oranges on the aftertaste, which gives it a nice uh, little citrusy kick right at the end. But um, yeah, this is a very well-balanced cider. Again, very light, very easy to drink, but again, at 4.8%, it's not actually going to blow your head off like some of the other ciders that I've had tonight. Um, so, actually, I've had really, really nice ciders tonight, and again, this one's no exception. So, I'm going to go and give Mill White's Hedge Layer Cider a 7 out to 10. So, um, well, it, the trend is still continuing, so will the last two sides that I have be as good as these ones? We'll find out soon. See you on the next side, the guys. Alright, and now we're joined uh, by Megan, who has, I believe, round head perry, is that right? Yes, that's right. Cool, cool. So, um, as I say, it is a perry, so a pear cider. So, um, well, why don't you go and dive in and let us know what you think? Okay. one you had, see? Like that one? That one, that's it. Blimey. Put the two together and you wouldn't even know the difference. Nope. Although there we go. this one's more cloudy. I don't know ah. if there's a technical term for cloudy. No, that's good. Cloudy, yeah, that's that's cool. Uh, everyone will know what you're talking about there. <laughs> so uh, would you recommend it to anyone that's looking for a perry at this festival? Yes, I would because it's um, really sweet and it's very yummy, really easy to drink. Um, but obviously for proper cider drinkers, I wouldn't. So, all right. So, uh, a mark out of ten. What would you give it? I'd give it a nine. Nine out of ten. Wow. Very, uh, very nice berry. So, look out for this one if um, you're going to any cider or ale festivals. And uh, well, I'm going really red now. <laughs> oh dear. Right. Well, I'll uh, cut it there. So, thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of Roundhead Perry. Thanks. <laughs> Hello guys, we're back with yet another cider, and I'm joined with Stephen this time because we've got the exact same cider. We are going for Sailor's Ruin. Yes, I've actually managed to finally get it. So, um, well, as you can see, it's, uh, well, it's pretty much 
that looks like all the other ciders that we've had so far tonight. Lightly golden in colour, still cloudy. Do we need to say any more? But um, yeah, I'm glad we've actually got this one because the last um, cider festival, they ran out of this bugger. So I'm actually glad I've got hold of this one now. But Stephen has decided to uh, give it a go as well. So why not indeed? Let's, uh, get a whiff. Shall we get a whiff? Get a whiff. Let's get a whiff. Although it says dry on the poster, that smells kind of sweet, which is quick. Yeah. Kind of like a, a, medi a medium sweet sort of, um, sort of tone to it. And, <laughs> and do you know what? I'm actually getting sort of like a, a raspberry undertone to it as well. I don't know whether you're getting that. It's not my hand again. Do you want to do you want to smell it with? Do you know what? For a first, I'll let's, just, I'll let's, use your hand. Yes, use use my hand to smell it. I don't even have half to say one, what the hell is Your it? hands are really nice. Thank you very much. But um, yeah, shall we, shall we dive in? So yeah, oh, raspberry the tone smells quite sweet, but is it going to be dry? Let's try it out. Let's dive in. Oh, wow. That's different. That is really different. Um, Put my finger on it actually. I'm going to have to go for a second opinion. Let's go. Okay, well, it's got. I don't know if you agree with me, but it's got sort of a, a citrusy initial taste. And then as it goes through to the aftertaste, you're left with this almost like a, a burnt wood sort of aftertaste to it. Smoky, smoky birds. With like a, with like a slight bit of third opinion. Yeah, th this is really not tasting what you're saying. It's really weird. Okay, citrus. There's definitely a citrusy. So, yeah, pretty good, but a 
we'll be back soon with the next cider and the final one. Thanks a man. Cheers, Steve. And here's the Sailor's Ruin. Alright guys, we have our final cider for the evening and it's the big one. I've gone for the Castings Malt Whiskey Cask Cider. Now as you know, I tried a uh, whiskey cask cider at the Chelmsford Beer Festival, which I think was about 7.2%. Normally the old uh, whiskey cask ciders are a much higher ABV than the other ones, but um, I said that was really, really nice, one of the nicest ciders I've ever tasted, so I'll be very interested to see how this one tastes. But there's a slight difference to this one because this one is 7.8% in volume, so it's easily the highest ABV cider that they do here. So, <laughs> yes, get a zoom in, get a zoom in, there we go. But again, can't really say much about the colour because it looks exactly the same as all the other ciders I've had today. Lightly golden in colour, slightly cloudy, so I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to go and get a whiff straight away. Well, you can definitely smell the whiskey that they've um, added into this uh, whis into this uh, cider. Obviously, it's been uh, matured in whiskey vats, so obviously that's how you're getting the uh, whiskey smell of it. I will say it's a lot more prominent than the last cider that I had, which is uh, probably why it's got a slightly stronger ABV, so it could, brings out more of the flavours to it. So, will it taste as strong as it smells? We'll find out soon. Cheers, guys. Here's two. Well, Castling's whiskey cask cider. strong. <laughs> oh fuck. Right, um wow. Give me <laughs> give me a sec, give me a sec. Wow that is strong. Okay, well definite hits of whiskey in this cider. Wow, that is so much more prominent than the last girl whiskey cast cider that I had. Pretty much all throughout, you're just getting this really nice tone of whiskey all throughout. But you're getting um, it's a really nice dry note to it as well. That is um, just adding, it, it kind of adds to the flavour of the whiskey because I feel if this was a, a sweet cider, it wouldn't add to the whiskey flavours as much. It would kind of uh, detract from them. Let's get a second opinion though, just to be sure. Bloody hell, that is good. That is really good. I will definitely say that um, if you're thinking of having this cider, probably only have one or two of these because this is going to absolutely blow your head off because it tastes as strong as it smells and the ABV um, dictates. 7.8%, my God, you can really taste it in this one. No worries. Here we go, nice uh, bounce, bounce that intervention there. Oh well, there we go. Um, but yeah, I'll wrap it up quickly because uh, of this um, that guy. But yeah, really, really nice dry undertones all throughout. You've got a really nice uh, fruity apple taste in the initial taste. And then all throughout, you've got this, getting this really nice whiskey head, obviously where the, um, the whiskey cask has um, been added into it. I will say, be very careful with this one though because it does taste as strong as it smells. So, for a final verdict for this one, I'm going to go and give Castling's Whiskey Cask Cider a 7 out of 10. Um, if you don't like your whiskies, it's not going to be for you, but apart from that, it is a very nicely tasting cider and a perfect one to finish the evening off with. So, until next time, I will be back with another delicious and tasty cider soon, but until then, that's the cider drinker at Colchester Camera Real Ale and Cider Festival, and I'll be back for the next one. Thank you very much to Stephen, the cameraman. Say thank you very much. Cheers. There we go. And thanks to Megan for her input in her Perry review. But until then, take care guys. Until next time, I'm going to go and get my business.